Today we'll be looking at the avenging angels of the Adeptus Sororitas, the Seraphim and the Zephyrim. Hello and welcome back to Allspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. So the Seraphim have been a staple elite's choice for Codex Sister of Battle for a long time now, wielding their iconic dual pistols and borne aloft on jump packs. With the release of the new Codex and all of the new plastic miniatures that have come along with that, Games Workshop have taken the opportunity to make the Zephyrim a multi-part variant of the same kit that instead equips its sisters with power swords to take the fight to the enemy at close quarters. In this video we'll be taking a look at the rules for both of these units, any obvious buffs or synergies on the battlefield for them, and how I would run them myself in a game of 40k. In the background, the Seraphim are deployed as rapid response hit and run squads, equipped with their iconic pistols, be they bolt pistols, inferno pistols or hand flamers, as well as being trained to be experts in unarmed combat for fighting hand to hand. Along with the Celestians, the Seraphim are some of the most elite units in the entire order of assists of battle convents, and are often called upon by their canonesses to advise in matters of war. Their angelic descent onto a battlefield is often a great morale boost to other imperial forces who often see them as a sign of great portent. The Zephyrim are yet more mysterious than the Seraphim, only allowing sisters to join their ranks who feel a persistent and direct connection to the god emperor himself. Overwhelmed by this persistent and holy connection, Zephyrim often lose all ability to communicate with their fellow sisters and speak unknown words in a state of unwavering rapture. Zephyrim prophecies are known to have foretold the fates of battles and star systems, and much unknown truth can be gained by listening to the quiet mutterings of these disconnected sisters. On the battlefield, they throw themselves into the enemy lines without heed for their survival, employing the power sword and the bolt pistol to deliver the Emperor's justice to the unworthy. So how will these beautiful new models function on the tabletop? Let's take a look at their rules. We'll start with the Seraphim squad first then. Seraphims are a fast attack choice for Codex Sisters of Battle. They cost 11 points apiece, and you get 5 girls in a squad. They're armed with 2 bolt pistols and frag and crack grenades, and they have their jump packs that bear them aloft with the fly keyword. Their profile is very similar to the standard Sisters of Battle profile, except with a movement of 12, so I won't repeat all of it again here. You can include another 5 models in the squad to make them up to a 10 woman squad. In terms of options, two of the Seraphim can be equipped with a pair of Ham Flamers or Inferno pistols instead of their bolt pistols. The Ham Flamers are just one additional point each, and are pistols with just a 6 inch range, strength 3, and d6 attacks. As Flamers, they also automatically hit their targets, so for the cost of 2 points, provided you can get them in range, 2 points and sacrificing a few bolt pistols for an average of 14 strength 3 hits certainly doesn't seem like a bad deal if you weren't planning on upgrading to the inferno pistols. Sorry, I should say that the hand flamers are 1 point each, so it would be 2 points per models, that would be 4 points, but still it's not bad at all. Quite a lot of anti-infantry fire to be coming out of a 5 woman squad. The other option is to take the Inferno Pistols for 7 points each, meaning that a 5 woman squad with 2 pairs of Inferno Pistols in it would cost you 83 points. Again, the pistols have a 6 inch range, and are basically a Meltagon profile aside from that, with Strength 8, AP-4, Damage D6, and if they're within 3 inches, you get to roll 2D6 and pick the highest as per the normal Melter rules. The Seraphim Superior can be equipped with a chain sword or power sword instead of the bolt pistol. Typically I'd be tending to stick with the bolt pistol just because it has better synergy with the squad's other weapons and those extra attacks that you'll be getting with the chain sword or power sword will only be at strength 3. The Seraphim Superior can also take a plasma pistol instead of her bolt pistol, which to be honest isn't too bad a shout, particularly if you have a source of reroll ones so she can safely overcharge it without blowing herself up. Bit of a shame she can't take two of the things as that would be very cool. In terms of loadouts, I'd be very tempted to run them, carrying the Inferno pistols as some dedicated close range anti-tank firepower, but if you're not doing this then I'd typically take the Ham Flamers instead. In terms of special rules, they have the Acts of Faith rule as per normal, Sacred Rites, where they could profit from something like Divine Guidance for extra AP on those bolt pistols on rolls of 6, or perhaps Spirit of the Martyr to get extra shots when they die. They also have Shield of Faith for the standard fairly weak attempt to deny the Witch, and the 6 plus Invul save which gets buffed to a 5 plus just at base because of their Angelic Visage special rule, and it can be further buffed by something like Celestine or a Warlord trait to get it to be a 4 plus which is where you really want these girls to be. Finally they have the Sky Strike special rule which is the one for putting them in Deep Strike Reserve and set up at the end of a movement phase greater than 9 inches from enemy models. Now usually this would be a bit of a disaster for the 6 inch range pistols, but fortunately the Seraphim have a stratagem to get around that, as we'll talk about later. 
Overall, though, they're a fast-moving, reasonably durable sister squad. They can be tooled up to deal some pretty serious damage to either armoured targets or infantry. Let's move on to looking at the Zephyrim now. Rather than being fast attack, Zephyrim are an elite choice for Codex Sisters of Battle, and they really are quite a bit pricier per model, costing you 17 points per model when equipped with their power swords. Again, it's a 5 model squad, including 4 Zephyrim and 1 Zephyrim Superior. They have exactly the same profile as the Seraphim, but they have 2 attacks rather than 1, the Zephyrim Superior has 3, and they have Leadership 8 at base and the Zephyrim Superior Leadership 9, rather than 7 and 8 for the Seraphim so they're kind of a bit more in line with Jump Pack Celestians compared with Jump Pack Battle Sisters, which is probably for the best as they're going to need those extra attacks for close combat. They're each equipped with a Power Sword and Bolt Pistol and Frag and Crack Grenades. They don't have quite as many options as the Seraphim Squad. The Superior can be given a Plasma Pistol instead of a Bolt Pistol, but frankly I wouldn't because it locks out her ability to take a Zephyrim Pennant, which I would absolutely take. The Zephyrim Pennant is a 5 point upgrade, putting your standard squad at... 90 points for the 5 girls with power swords, allows you to re-roll charge rolls made for any order units while they're within 6 inches of any friendly units with a Zephyrim pennant when the roll is made. So basically any of your order sister battle units are getting re-roll charges from this, but more importantly the Zephyrim themselves will be, as they will be treated as if they're in range of their own aura. For a dedicated melee unit, I think that re-roll charges, if you can buy it for 5 points, is an absolute auto-include, so I would get this with every single Zephyrim squad. Other than this, they do have all the same rules that the Seraphim have, including Acts of Faith, Sacred Rites, Shield of Faith, which again is further supplemented by Angelic Visage, meaning that they have a 5 plus Invul save base that can go up to a 4 plus if you're next to Celestine or something. They also have Sky Strike, meaning that they can be off the board for a bit, and then jump down and get re-roll charges for that 9 inch charge with the Zephyrim Pennant. But finally, they also have Rapturous Blows, which is a rule that buffs them in melee. And it's a nice flat re-roll the wound roll in melee, which is a really big deal when you're only hitting at strength 3, which would otherwise really limit them. This means that even an unbuffed squad on the charge will slay between 3 and 4 tactical marines, which are pretty much their ideal prey, being one wound elite infantry with a decent armor save. And as we already know, the Assists of Battle Codex has a huge amount of combat buffs, as we'll get onto in a second. So overall, Zephyrim are a little bit more expensive than their Seraphim sisters, trading out decent ranged damage outputs for fairly convincing melee abilities and also being able to re-roll charges. They're definitely going to be better at taking out infantry than tanks or anything due to no multi-damage weapons, but they still will likely push through a few wounds against armoured targets if needed. So let's have a think about how we can get more out of both of these units on the tabletop. Firstly, let's talk about Order Convictions. Firstly, our Martyred Lady will be good for both of these squads. They're likely to be on the front line taking casualties, so being able to hit on twos, both in melee and close combat, is certainly a decent positive. Valorous Heart will make both units much, much more durable, as they're likely to be able to get that 4 plus inball save very easily, and when combined with ignoring any AP-2 modifiers when an Imagifier is nearby, and that 6 up feel no pain really will make them a pain to shift. Bloody Rose can boost the melee capabilities of both squads, but it's particularly potent on the Zephyrim as they're already a reasonable close combat unit. Those power forwards will jump to being AP-4 on the charge, and in the first round of close combat, they'll gain an additional attack as well. So if we killed 3 or 4 tactical space marines before, in Bloody Rose we'll be killing around about 6 or 3 Primaris intercessors, so it really does turn them from being a semi-credible melee threat to one that's almost twice as good. Argent Shroud, being able to advance and shoot weapons as if it hadn't advanced, could be very handy for the Seraphim, particularly if they're starting on the table, and they're one of the better units to use with this conviction. The other orders aren't quite as clear-cut choices for either units, but I think they remain fairly strong no matter where they're played. Character Synergy is a really big deal for both of these units. In particular, I think that Celestine has some of the best synergy with both of these. Being a fast-moving jump pack model, it's also absolutely murderous in close combat, and she also buffs their Shield of Faith save, meaning that they'll always be on that nice 4 plus save. She could potentially deep strike next to them, but I think it'd be typically easier just to have them jump down next to her, or maybe even both of them start on the board together. In terms of damage output, Canonesses can provide their reroll ones, and could also use the Indomitable Belief Warlord traits to buff their saves, and there's a few other ways that Canonesses can buff damage output or close combat abilities for being nearby with Relics and Warlord traits. If you're using Order of Our Martyred Lady, then Junith Arita could also be another good pickup. She's fast, moderately good in close combat, provides that same Shield of Faith buff, and also will allow them to reroll ones to hit and wounds, so pairs well with both Seraphim and Zephyrim. Imagifiers can be good for them in two ways as well. Boosting their strength to 4 really helps Zephyrim get their work done in close combat, 
They'll be wounding toughness 4 targets much more reliably, and can even threaten up to strength 7, where re-rolling the wound roll they will actually wound there most of the time. They can also help with ignoring AP-1 as well, which is great on high invul save units. And finally, priests for the extra attacks will certainly help out Zephyrim. It means that you could potentially have 4 attack Zephyrim with Order of the Bloody Rose. If you manage to pull off some maximal coordination with a full squad of Zephyrim, getting them strength 4 from an Imagifier, an extra attack from a priest, and re-rolls of 1 to hit with a Canonist, and you also have them as Bloody Rose, it will kill on average 24 tactical marines, so that's around a full squad of intercessors. Now obviously that's a lot of moving parts to be getting into one place, and particularly as most of them are quite slow to buff the Zephyrim, it might be easier said than done, but it does show that they have a pretty decent damage output when the stars align. In terms of stratagems, both units have some solid options of their own. The Zephyrim have a 1 command point 1 called Embodied Prophecy, which essentially gives an aura of reroll wound rolls of 1 to any Adeptus Sororitas unit within 6 inches of the Zephyrim unit. It is quite cool and that could cover quite a large area, but bear in mind that it's only a small buff to the damage of other units nearby. I think that you would have to have quite a lot of other units in close combat within range of this to actually make it worth it in terms of damage output. Maybe if you had Celestine making combat on one side of them and a bunch of Repentia on the other side, it possibly could be worth it, but otherwise probably not the best use of one command point in my opinion. On the other hand, the Seraphim have Deadly Descent, which is far more useful, though in fact it's kind of so useful that you might be wanting to use it most games. Basically when your Seraphim squad is set up on the battlefield from reserve, that unit can immediately make a shooting attack as if it were the shooting phase, and when it does it adds 6 inch range to all of its pistols. So say if you jumped your 83 point Seraphim squad down next to a tank, it would allow you to hit it with 4 melter guns, as well as the smattering of bolt pistols. Now this is absolutely worth it, 1 command point and 83 points, 4 melter shots out of nowhere on an enemy tank is pretty nice. I also like the way that this essentially allows you to shoot your bolt pistols twice. Basically once they've come out of reserve they won't be firing the hand flamers or inferno pistols again, because this range boost doesn't last till the shooting phase, but the bolt pistols, they can do both. They'll be shooting at 18 inch ranges in the movement phase, and then at 12 inch range in the shooting phase, meaning that if you did get a big squad, say 4 inferno pistols and 8 girls with bolt pistols, you'd be getting a pretty respectable 32 bolt pistol shots out of them over the course of the turn, and that's in addition to those melter shots, a very strong stratagem this one. In terms of other stratagems, Judgment of the Faithful for 2 command points could be used by both squads. You use this when you fall back, and it means that you can still shoot and charge over the course of the following turn. This could be great if you do slam your Zephyrim squad into a hard target. Using 2 command points means that you could fall them back, and then have them go after something really key in the core of the enemy army. Or maybe even just charge in and tie up a bunch of tanks or maybe wrap a unit or something. It means that your opponent can't just forget about a Zephyrim squad if he has managed to tie them up with something like a Rhino or another tough tank. It could also make Seraphim very annoying, more from the wrapping up point of view as opposed to damage dealing. In theory, Holy Trinity could be used by the Seraphim squad. This is the one where you fire a bolt, flame, and melter shot at the same unit, but it would have to be used in the shooting phase, meaning that you can't use it out of Deep Strike, which does sort of limit its potential. All the same, if you had one model with hand flamers and one model with inferno pistols, then it could be plus one to wound for all of those attacks, and a whole load of bolt pistol shots if you get the positioning right. Holy Rage could be particularly handy for a Zephyrim squad, as it allows you to charge after advancing for one command point. Not bad to give them a little bit of extra threat range, particularly if you're using the Sacred Rite that allows plus one to advance and charge. Tear Them Down is a stratagem from Order of the Bloody Rose, which again will be very good to use with a Zephyrim. Basically you use this when an Order of the Bloody Rose unit is chosen to fight with, and until the end of the phase when resolving an attack made by a melee weapon in that model's unit, add one to the wound roll. Now this one stacks absolutely beautifully with the reroll wounds ability that Zephyrim have, and it just makes them so much more efficient against every single target in the game. Typically, when you're attacking a Toughness 4 target, this is equivalent to a 35% damage buff on damage output of the unit, and that's really not bad for one command point, particularly if you're running a fairly big unit. So how would I actually go about using these units in-game? Typically I think that both units are fairly flexible as to whether or not you'd want to be starting them on the board, where you might against some armies, or off the board against others. Let's talk about them one at a time. First we'll talk about Seraphim, where my preferred loadout would be to have the four Inferno pistols typically, as sisters generally have a decent amount of anti-infantry firepower, so getting another pretty efficient anti-tank option is pretty nice. I'd certainly think about buying a few more girls into the squad to help with their durability so you don't lose those valuable Inferno pistols too quickly. 
I'd really think about setting them up in deep stripe most of the time, and then using that deadly descent stratagem to get a whole bunch of bolt shots and those inferno pistols out of nowhere. However, if the enemy has a whole bunch of units that are good at screening, then this strategy might not necessarily be the best. It might be better to set them up somewhere out of line of sight, say a ground floor ruin or something, and have them as a big counterpunch threat that can jump up when an enemy threat manifests itself and hit it in the face with four inferno pistols. I certainly wouldn't forget about charging these girls into close combat when they're facing down anything that doesn't have a decent close combat damage profile. They could hopefully lock up some units from being able to shoot one turn and then jump out and then shoot them some more with their bolt pistols or inferno pistols next turn. And of course you do always have the option of keeping them in close combat and frying them with their pistols while they remain in combat. In terms of Zephyrim, I could happily either put them in deep strike or on the board as well, in a similar fashion to the Seraphim. That re-roll charges will certainly help them get into charge out of deep strike, but it's by no means guaranteed. You could have a very expensive squad just sat around looking wistfully at the enemy 9 inches away that they wanted to charge and not being able to do any damage because you failed the roll. So I'd say that setting up on the board is ideal if you can, but you need to be able to keep them safe as they're quite expensive models. You really don't want to be losing them before they make close combat. I'd typically be wanting to buy a slightly bigger squad of Zephyrim rather than the base 5 because often when you charge into close combat you might lose some to overwatch or just some chip damage from combat or shooting over the course of the game and when the squad gets small enough it's just no longer going to be anywhere near as effective compared with a big squad that had taken half casualties or something. It'll also be a little bit more efficient for buffs and stratagems such as that bloody rose tear it down one. If you can coordinate with them getting within priest, canoness or imagifier range then that's also great. If you had a Zephyrim squad in reserve, you could think about where these buffing characters are, maybe move them to be next to the Zephyrim, so when they jump down and make that charge, they can be receiving the buffs from those units. When either of these squads make close combat, I'd certainly be looking to wrap and trap enemy units, and then either hopefully kill them in the close combat on the Zephyrim's case, or maybe jump back and hit some things with bolt pistols and inferno pistols with the Seraphim. We did mention it briefly before, but I think that Celestine is pretty much one of the perfect buffing character for these guys. She's very scary in close combat and can put people off being too bold near them, and gets them up to that 4 plus invul save that they really want to be at the whole time. Overall, I think that both of them are decently competitive units in the Sisters of Battle army list, providing some good rapid response, heavy hitting damage output in an army that's otherwise fairly slow moving on the whole. They already have been used in competitive tournament lists, and I'm sure they'll continue to be in the future. Let me know if you have any other thoughts or opinions on using either unit in your army. I think they're definitely a strong unit, but one that could potentially be badly misplayed and you could get them killed for no return whatsoever in the wrong circumstances. So any further insights that you have are absolutely greatly appreciated. If you've enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to Auspex Tactics for more 40k content every day. And if you'd like to help support the channel, then I do have an Element Games affiliate link in the description below. Basically, if you live in the UK and you were thinking of buying some Warhammer in the near future, if you click on that link in the description, it will take you to their web store. You still get the same decent discount compared with Games Workshop prices when ordering models in, and a small amount of the proceeds goes to Auspex Tactics without costing you any more at all. So please bear it in mind if you are thinking about buying any new miniatures sometime soon. In any case, thank you very much for listening. I hope to see you guys next time.